All right, there, everybody. How's it going? This uh, this your boy, Dim Trees, Demetrius, with FTO. Got a brand new podcast that I'm doing right now for you. <clears throat> I'm a little shaky in my voice. I'm trying to get everything situated. I usually write everything down before before I actually sit down and do the podcast. But this time, I'm just kind of like just winging it. So I'm just gonna go through it and just go through my stuff. I know, like, I take a while doing these podcasts. I don't know why it takes so long with doing these things. Because I already have the news in front of me. I'm reading comic books. I'm always up to date with stuff like that. It's just, it's not even about finding the time. I think I'm just really damn lazy when it comes to doing podcasts. That and I don't like doing it by myself. I feel like I should have someone else doing these podcasts with me. But, um... I'm going to get someone. I got like a few people I'm talking to with doing a podcast. Uh, at least four people I can think of that I want to do podcasts with, but it's not going to be the same person every single episode. That's going to be like the real weird part for the guys that are, for you guys listening to it. new comic books i read the new uh captain america which is freaking amazing it had like a little slow start it was a big narrative sport alerts by the way for you guys who haven't read the new captain america but it has like a slow start to it steve's pretty much doing like a narrative about how he did captain america for a while and how things change how he's older now because of super soldier Super Soldier Serum's not in his body anymore, so it aged him pretty rapidly. And we all know what's going to happen, because on the cover, you see this little white silhouette of, like, a new Captain America. We all know it's going to be Sam Wilson, the Falcon. He's going to be a new Captain America. I like the suit. I like how he keeps, like, his same Falcon motif to it. He has, like, the wings, and he still looks like the Falcon. But, you know, he's Captain America now. And he made a joke about, like, you guys knew it was going to be me. Like, all you guys knew it was going to be me. But before that, the cool part is, which I think they should make a comic book of, you see all, like, the Marvel Universe heroes there. They're all just hanging out. Some of the people you don't even recognize. Like, even, like, some of the other heroes don't recognize some of the guys that are there. And they're all just, like, chit-chatting with each other, cracking jokes. Even Steve's, like, older guy, cracking jokes also. Yeah, like Spider-Man's there, Rogue is there. You got like all those guys there just making jokes with each other. And it's awesome. It's like a good like camaraderie. That I would love if we just read a comic book that's just that's just that. Just superheroes just dicking around the entire time. I would love to just read a comic book about that. I remember that one uh what comic book was it? It was a comic book where where Logan and Carol Carol Danvers we're playing cards with each other and they're just like they're talking about crap about how they get their asses kicked all the time or like the people they have to fight all the time like how like I've had it worse than you as a superhero like you had it worse I've had it worse than you as a superhero they're just going back and forth I forget what comic book that was if you guys know that comic book let me know because I do need to add it to my collection I saw it on like a Tumblr post a while back but I forgot to write down what issue it was and then like a bad guy breaks in and they pretty much ask him, like, hey, are you good at playing cards? So they all started playing cards together. I think it was Black Widow and Hawkeye who heard, like, the siren go off that someone's breaking in to the compound. And and then, like, you just see all three of them playing cards together, talking about, like, how bad they all have it being, like, heroes and villains. It was just, it was an awesome, awesome little short story, little one-shot. And, like, it made me think about that when I was reading the Captain America comic book. But yeah, it was a good comic book. I I want to see what happens next because obviously, like, there's a lot of stuff going on with Sam Wilson, and they're also making a Sam Wilson and a and a Mighty Avengers. 
So I talked about the Mighty Avengers before, about how they're pretty much the minority team of the Marvel Universe right now because they have some Hispanics. They have black superheroes pretty much inside the Mighty Avengers. And now they got the big front runner, the new Captain America, joining the Mighty Avengers. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I know Mighty Avengers is good. It's really damn good. It's been going on for probably, what was it? Is it 20 something issues now? I know it was in the original Sin. Like they had like the actually segue Mighty Avengers with the original Sin event also. But yeah, there you go. Sam Wilson, the Falcon, is the new Captain America. They, they're they putting him in the Mighty, Mighty Avengers also. So I think it's pretty cool. I. I'm interested in seeing what happens with Sam Wilson because, you know, he he does kind of mirror the way he was in the movie a little bit, but he still has, like, the same kind of quality he had before the movie as well. It just, he just does his own thing. He's, he can have a little temper here and there, but, you know, he does his own thing. He is extremely loyal to Steve. Like, they see each other as equals, and that's beautiful in my eyes. So, yeah, I think I think it's a good thing to have have him as... Captain America, let let Steve Rogers take a break for a while, because we all know he's going to come back as Captain America. We all know it's going to happen. I've also been reading the uh, Uncanny X-Men, Amazing X-Men, X-Men, which I'm not a big fan of. I, I want to say it's because like it's just different writing to it. I know like it's pretty much like an all-female cast inside the X-Men comic books, that has nothing like really to do with the reason why I don't like this comic because Rogue and Psylocke, they're freaking awesome together. And Rachel, Rachel is freaking amazing inside this comic book. Storm is kind of like a dick. In all honesty, Storm is kind of like a dick in X Men. She's a full on ass. But like, it's just something about it. It just I'm not really digging this story at all. Jubilee is probably the most interesting character in all of this, even though Psylocke and Rogue. Like they're all still pretty interesting. You just Jubilee, like in that in that show Shogo, like the baby. That's, that's kind of like all I really care about in this. So I want to keep reading a little bit more because I did finally read the Battle of the Atom, which is fucking awesome. Just so damn good. Just really good. But yeah, I'm talking a lot about comic books right now. I know, like I'm reading a lot of different stuff. I'm finally reading uh, Batman Zero Year. It took me. Took me a while to even like touch the DC comic, and I'm starting out with Zero Year, which is really damn good. I want to try to read Justice League Dark also, so keep listening. I'll, I'll get Justice League Dark. I want to see what Constantine does in Justice League Dark, and I want to read more about Dead Man. That's why I want to get a hold of it. But first off, this is person who made a giant Hulk statue. It's all made out of metal. He looks exactly like the Edward Norton Incredible Hulk. Hulk, like the same kind of style as that. It's a person in Thailand. He made this bad boy. It's a. Uh, it's pretty damn impressive. This guy knows how to use metal. Like, extremely well done. It's it's all like. Rusted looking, so there's like no real, there's no color to it, just all rusted looking. It looks pretty damn awesome. He got like the the body down, the hands, the feet. This this is full on. The only thing that that looks weird, is like the actual, like his teeth, his his nose. He looked kind of a. Uh, he looks more Asian than he does Hulk. It just it looks cool. It just. That's probably the only like critique I have on this thing. It's just like the actual face looks weird, but the body, it's mag it's magnanimous. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's just really freaking awesome. Everything I talk about, I'm gonna try to put it in to like the links down below so you guys can check all that stuff out later on as well. All right, talk a little bit more, more comic book news. This is actually news here. So Snyder. Is doing Batman's Endgame. It's uh, issue number 35 of Batman. And spoiler alert again, let you guys know, the Joker is coming back. The Joker is coming back for issue number 35 for this Endgame. They're bringing a lot of people in on this. They got the Justice League inside the Batman comic book because the Joker is coming back. So it's a big return. You haven't seen the Joker since Death in the Family, and that was like 
that was like a year and a half ago. So you finally get to see what, where the Joker's been, what he's doing. I have not read A Court of Vowels. I have not read Definite Family. You guys have heard all my stuff before about how I've been very anti-DC. I'm trying to look past all that because Future's in. It's kind of changing everything. And I, I've this multiversity, which I'm going to be reading pretty soon also. Hopefully that changes everything also. If it doesn't change anything, I'll still check out Justice League Dark. I'll also try to read some Batman stuff. I'm debating if I want to read Green Lantern. I really miss reading Supergirl. I really miss reading Teen Titans. But, yeah. Let's go back on with the more news. This is going to be more of a comic book news. Because news and everything else hasn't really been that strong when it comes to nerd stuff. But, um... Hawkeye versus Deadpool, issue number one, already out digitally. I think it's only a digital download. Comicology has it right now, but yeah. From the cover, it looks like it's gonna be freaking hilarious. And since Hawkeye's been doing his comic book for a while, I know it's been kind of like up and down with his comic book. Like a lot of issues have been great. Some of the newer ones haven't been as well, but yeah, I'm really kind of excited to see this. I've always been a Deadpool fan. If you don't like Deadpool, that's your problem, not mine. But yeah. Uh, what was it? Matteo Lolilo? Lolili? I'm like buttering the hell out of this name. And Gary Dungan, he's writing it. It's, it looks pretty good. You, you can see a couple pages on Comicology right now. The art is freaking gorgeous. The inside art is absolutely gorgeous. Mateo. I think that's how you say his first name. Yeah. Mateo. Lolil. Or Loli. Mateo Loli. I'm very bad at pronouncing names. I can barely speak English sometimes. So saying a foreign name is not going to do me any good. So, again, apologize for that. But, yeah. It's all about pretty much, uh, like, I think it's a Halloween issue. And pretty much Deadpool and Hawkeye trying to kill each other. So... If anything, it'll probably be a fun read. At least I don't think so. The other thing I want to talk about is I just found this out because it just came on yesterday for the first time. I think it was yesterday. The Flash TV show. Flash TV show was the highest rating show the CW has had in the past five years. To me, that's pretty damn awesome. So in the, in the past five years, it has itself like the most ratings. And... That says a lot considering Arrow came out three years ago. So there you go. So Arrow was even like their number one rating show five years ago. So The Flash is doing better. The Flash is doing better than Arrow did when it first came out. And the funny thing is, if you watch The Flash episode, again, more spoilers. At the very end of the episode, they show a they show a uh, newspaper. I talk about how the Flash is dead and how all this like bad stuff has happened in that universe, in that uh, in the city. And if you stick around with the show for ten years, you may actually get to see this happen. So I think that's kind of like a nod to the to the audience, like, "Hey, let us go to ten years, then you can see what this newspaper is all about." Most people are suspecting that it's going to be like a big like like crisis on infinite earths kind of thing or infinite crisis kind of like debacle going on i can see why i think that i kind of think the same thing 10 years is a long fucking time to invest into this show especially if it just gets crappy after a while but if they're bringing captain cold and a mirror master and they already have like like the what a wizard if they do it right and not try to make it serious like they do with batman or make it serious like they do with arrow i think they can actually pull it off and make it freaking amazing because I would very much love to see how they make all this, all this stuff like in the world of like the Flash, which is, which is awesome. It's really damn awesome. The guy's playing Flash reminds me a lot of Andrew Garfield. I know you guys can see it. I know he's on Glee before, and like he, he looks like Spider Man. He acts like Spider Man. Like you can see Spider Man in him, but you also see like Barry Allen in there at the same time. Also, like a mix of both of those guys put together and like he's making his own type of like new new class of superhero he's like he's a nerd he's a science nerd and like he's really damn cool at the same time so 
very relatable like to a lot of the geek audience out there watching the Flash show. So I'm very excited to see like the Flash. See like second episode two because the pilot was good and it's hard to base a show off a of pilot. It's like reading like the first issue of a comic book and saying like, all right, that was awesome or all right, that was terrible. You can't really do that, especially nowadays. You can't do that with just one, one like one shot of something. You gotta have like at least three or six episodes before you say, like, okay, that's crap. Like Agents of Shield. Uh, I know that's that's going on right now. Also, they just had an episode with uh, Absorbing Man. I thought it was Gargoyle, but it's Absorbing Man in one of the episodes, and I can't do it. That show is just terrible. Maybe if it's on like a like a different channel, or if it came on at a later time, they can do a little bit more with it. I know it's supposed to be a family show, but you gotta be able to cut loose. With shows like that, you gotta like stop playing it safe. You're just like you're riding the fence with that show, and it's only still being on air because fans just want to see Colson. They want to see like those characters that they see in the movies, and it's gonna be like a it's gonna be a point where fans are like, all right, fuck this. This show is just this this is just too dumb. It made it two years. That's good enough. I'll buy the DVD for the special features. Like, but just stop making this show. It's gonna happen because it's getting there. Like slowly but surely. It's, Freaking getting there. But uh, a couple of stuff I want to talk about. They have a Sabrina the Teenage Witch comic book coming out. Um, I think it's supposed to be like a spinoff of like the, or like a, I'm guessing an homage to the, the what was it called? Afterlife of Archie. Archie Afterlife. It's supposed to be like a whole zombie thing going on in the Archie universe. And they're trying to make Sabrina the Witch a little bit more dark. Which is also in the Archie universe. Archie has been around for a long, long time, and it hasn't really changed that much. And this is like the first time you really see the change inside the Archie universe, because Archie and Sabrina Teenage Witch, and I know they got like a new Mega Man Sonic comic book coming out also. And Archie looks awesome for the Sonic Mega Man. I don't read stuff like that, but. That cover alone may seem least to this one like, all right, what the hell are you guys doing inside this? Actually, I think that's Sonic and Mega Man. It's a different different universe. I think that's, uh, fuck, was it Boom? Ignore that. Forget that. Scratch that. I'm editing this, so I can just, I can just cut that out of there. But yeah, the Serena book looks freaking awesome. Looks pretty damn cool. I'm interested to see like, how they play this out because the art to it looks pretty it looks different than most Archie stuff I've seen before. It could be the same artist. I didn't do too much research into it, so I could be wrong. But yeah, it looks it looks interesting. Apparently, they're gonna focus more like on her past and like her father and how she came to be and like why she is the way she is. Really dark kind of stuff. One I've seen because her father like her father was like as part demon or something like that. This is like Sabrina and Teenage Witch. She's like her father, like part demon. It's like supposed to be some dark stuff going on. So that kind of caught my interest. Not not because of the whole demon part. Or maybe it is because of that. I'm a weird individual, so. But yeah. It looks cool. I think it's supposed to come out. I think it's this month it comes out. Or maybe it's uh, next month that it comes out. I did not write down anything. I am just behind on everything. But it's supposed to be, I think it's pretty soon that it comes out. So keep keep an eye out for it. Keep an eye out for it, most definitely. And <clears throat> lastly, that I want to talk about, like I said, there wasn't much news out there in the comic book world, in like the nerd world, except for they did talk about how they want to put Spider-Man in the Avengers movie. This is just a rumor. Nothing confirmed, but they want to try to put Spider Man into the Avengers, into the uh, the Avengers movie, and I guess like play flippity flop back and forth with each other. I don't think that's gonna happen. And the only way that does happen is if uh, if Sony grabs some of Disney Marvel's like characters and transfer them back and forth from the Spider Man movie. So say like. Say like they got like a Sinister Six movie coming out and they wanted to use perhaps um, they wanted to put Captain America or they wanted to use Hawkeye to team up with Spider-Man to, to take down the Sinister Six. That is the only way that'll work. 
And I don't see Marvel doing something like that because they already, more news, I just thought about this also, they already, Marvel Comics have canceled, they're canceling the Fantastic, Fantastic Four comic book. Completely canceling the Fantastic Four comic. They're not going to get rid of the characters. They're just going to cancel the comic book because they don't want to give any kind of publicity to the new Fantastic Four movie that's coming out. Like, zero publicity for it whatsoever. So, they cancel the comic. Um, we all know it's going to come back after the movie. Either, like, the seas or tank. But, that, wow. Canceling a comic book just to screw over a movie. That's pretty... Jeez. Just Wow. That's crazy, crazy talk. I want to try and do a little bit different stuff next time when I try to talk about more, uh, talk about more comic book stuff on the podcast, do more like comic book reviews on the podcast, maybe a little bit of news, and do actual videos of the actual nerd news, and do video game news also, like that, on a video. Probably like a minute, maybe five to a minute long videos every so often whatever comes out just do a video I want there to be like a just a one news source kind of how Machinima or The Know or uh, Nerdist do news I know Nerdist do like comic book news and stuff already but I want it to just be just straight comic book news sometimes some game stuff inside of it as well just an outlet for people who read comic books and want to know about all their writers and artists and I will try to do my best not to butcher their names <laughs> But yeah, you guys enjoy yourself. Hope your weekend was well. And let life come to you.